My name is Yossi Ginsberg. As you can see, I live in a tent. A tent beside the beauty and the romance of the ambience. A tent means a lot to me. My relationship with the world is symbolized in this tent because a tent reminds me that I'm just passing through, that I'm a nomad, a traveling soul in this sojourn on this planet not hiding behind concrete or brick wall, but being one and part of the elements. It all started when I was a young man armed with a dream, and there's nothing more little than a youth with a naive dream. My dream was to become a great explorer, and that dream brought me to South America. On the road, the first that I met was a Swiss school teacher on a sabbatical. We became very close friends. His name was Marcus Tam, a very gentle soul, a beautiful person. Then came Kevin. Kevin was a big American photographer, an alpinist, a famous backpacker. But it was Carl in the alleys of the colonial part of La Paz. I met this mysterious figure introducing himself as Karl Ruprecht, an Austrian geologist, and telling me about the Madidi, the uncharted Amazon, where an elusive tribe and treasures of gold await. With that kind of an adventure, I couldn't resist. I pulled my friends to join, and the four of us left civilization. We flew as far as an airplane can take us, and then we walked through the forest until the trail disappeared and we were in the Uncharted. Three weeks has, have passed. And at that stage, trouble emerged. Marcus was injured, he couldn't walk well anymore. Also, there was not much to eat. We were hunting monkeys because monkeys are easy to hunt. But provisions were running very low. We also realized not finding any tribe or any goal. We realized that our guide was not the man he told us he was. Confused, we decided that the best thing for us is try to evacuate as fast as possible. Kevin suggested we build a raft, but Carl insisted he wanted to cut away through the forest and find a way back to civilization. That dispute broke the group. Marcus joined Carl, following him up the river, they've disappeared and were never seen again. Kevin and I took the raft, pushed it into the water, only to find that it's very hard to control the raft. A few hours later, the river got narrow, and then we entered the canyon, two walls protruding from both sides. We were trapped, couldn't stop, no shore, no beach to land on. Then came a huge rock. The raft crashed into the rock broken, splitting wood, noise of roaring water, the screams, <laughs> the water swept me down the waterfall when I came out miraculously, hardly breathing, looking for Kevin all around, Kevin have disappeared. I managed to get to the bank of the river, screaming and searching for Kevin, but Kevin never emerged from the water. For days, I just waited and looked for him, but four days later, I realized I will never see Kevin again, alone in the forest. No equipment, no gun, no knife, no food, no machete. My lifelong dream turned to be my worst nightmare. For weeks, I was alone in the Amazon. But within days, a huge change occurred. A sensation unfamiliar to me because sometimes one need to lose everything in order to find themselves. Actually, I never felt so belonging. I never felt so strong because losing everything meant also losing the self-doubt, the, the self-doubt and losing the belittling and realizing indeed I am the hero of this story and I can deal with it. Realizing adversity is part of life but victim is always a matter of choice. 
walking in that forest, I turned into one big open wound without a machete dealing with the vegetation. My body was all scratches and wounds and bite and nothing heals because constantly the humidity and the rain and the floods and dangerous animals, the jaguars, the deadly snakes, the boars. I learned how to survive. In fact, I didn't need to learn how to survive because survival is natural. Survival is something we don't need to learn. In circumstances of re real survival, we know what to do. Our fingernails become sharp as our tusks. I learned how to scavenge, to find an egg, to rob an egg from a nest, to find a, 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 a tree with, with, with fruits that I can collect. Gradually getting weaker in my body, but not weaker in my spirit. You can lose everything, but certain things cannot be taken from you. Nobody can take your courage. Nobody can take your faith. Nobody can take your resourcefulness. In fact, I was intoxicated by an attitude that I never knew I owned. A flood came and the flood pushed me deep into the hills. For three days, I was trying to find the river back. And at one occasion, I fell into a swamp. It was about like half a day that I just pulled myself inch by inch until I managed to get out of the swamp. At this stage, I was too weak and wasn't able to get on my feet again. I realized that under the canopy, I stand no chance. If anything, I have to make it to the river, but I couldn't get on my feet. My foot wouldn't carry me anymore. From the corner of my eyes, I saw something moving. I looked, it was a tree, and the old tree seemed to be moving in a strange way. Quickly, I realized the tree is covered with fire ants. Without thinking at all, I started crawling towards that tree. Once I got to the beach, there I collapsed. My feet were burning my entire body. I was like a human torch burnt by the bites of the fire ants. But pain, pain saved my life. I realized that that pain was so strong but actually there was no suffering because pain is a sensation of the body, but suffering is a fruit of the mind. You cannot escape pain, but you don't, need, you don't need to suffer. Sitting on the log by the river, suddenly I heard a scratch and something came crawling from beneath my legs, a turtle. I think it was five days that I went without food because after the flood, there was nothing to be found on the forest floor. So as I saw the turtle, immediately I saw, I'll break its shield and I'll tear its flesh, eating the raw meat. But then the turtle pulled its head from his shield and looked me in the eyes. It was a magical moment. Two creatures deep in the forest, both of us wanted to leave. Looking at the eyes of the turtle, I was washed with compassion. In fact, I thought to myself, 
the turtle stands a better chance. And I didn't kill the turtle. It was the next day, lying there, that I heard. I, I, I thought I, I'm hearing a, a wasp or a bee hovering above my head. But when I opened my eyes, there was no bee and no wasp. Looking towards the river, I couldn't believe my eyes. A boat was there but the boat was being pushed from the bank of the river and going down and away. I tried to get on my feet, but no, no voice came out of my throat. were saved. Kevin came back for me. With him, indigenous people that saved him and risked their life to come back for the mere chance that I'm still alive. I was saved and taken out of the Amazon. But in fact, I couldn't leave the Amazon again. I returned to the Amazon. I went back to the tribe that saved both me and Kevin, and I made the Amazon my home. For three years, I lived with the tribe in the, in the midst of the Amazon. I became one of them. I was initiated as an Uchupiamona, the name of this tribe. Living with them, with the shamans, walking in the forest, not as a young boy lost, but actually, uh, with the shamans, with the tribesmen, deciphering the mystery of the forest and the mystery of life, how we are all interconnected, interrelated, how much we depend upon each other. I de decided to dedicate my life to the protection of the forest and its people. Thank you so much. I hope to see you again soon.